Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today and after three weeks of no Xbox news videos, I can't believe it's been that long either, today we return because things are heating up, it's E3 season baby and that means, huh wait, you hear that, sounds like jingle bells, <laughs> well that's because it's the most wonderful time. E3 season, baby. Christmas for gamers. Let's go. Santa's bringing us the gifts. And it starts off with an arrival from Jeff Grubb, Santa's favorite elf. Now, if you're new here and you like all Xbox stuff, we're going to be talking about a ton of it coming into the month of June and onwards. Then be sure to consider subscribing and checking out the other content we have here. With all that in mind, like I said, it begins with Santa's favorite elf, Jeff Grub, we're on his Games Mess show. He says that the Xbox E3 event will start on June 13th. Um, let's talk about the timing of, of the Xbox showcase. So uh, this week, uh, I, I don't think it's just gonna be Microsoft. Obviously, like this week, things are happening for real. Uh, some companies should say like date and time when they're gonna do stuff. I think Nintendo probably will as well. Um, but Microsoft for sure, for sure should tell us this week. And uh, that, that day is going to be june 13th so sunday june 13th we will have the xbox showcase this is actually kind of funny because i just guessed it on colt eastwood's xbox newscast show and we were talking a bit about the joint presser between bethesda and xbox that's going to occur and while that was confirmed and we'll talk about that in a moment and what that could actually mean for e3 we started to get into how it's very strange that there isn't a date yet for really anybody we know when e3 is taking place but we don't know what day what time any of this is happening so jeff grubb has the these june 13th mark it on your calendar i cannot wait of course you should all expect this but if you don't i am going to be live streaming it but what can we expect from bethesda and xbox's e3 well let's get into the confirmation of the joint presser and exactly where xbox is at because it also may explain why we really haven't heard a confirmed date for e3 officially from xbox video game chronicle reports xbox and bethesda are planning to host a joint conference in a few weeks matt booty who heads up xbox game studios reportedly told french publication le figaro sorry if i'm saying that wrong that the event would take place in a few weeks suggesting a mid-june time frame coinciding with summer game fest and e3 2021 which now we have the info on booty also told journalist chloe wotier sorry if i'm saying that wrong as well who wrote the article that there was a COVID impact on the production of xbox game studios titles which slowed down production and mostly impacted original games rather than sequels. He also reportedly said Microsoft doesn't want its studios to create games simply based on what might work on Game Pass best. When asked if further acquisitions were in the cards for Xbox Game Studios, Booty said he couldn't share anything. All right, mid-June it is, June 13th. What can we expect from this confirmed Xbox Bethesda showcase? Isn't it weird how things are going? This is the impact of COVID because you can hear, yeah, we're gonna do this thing together, but we don't know when it's happening. We can't say yet. There are so many things that I think are up in the air on what can be shown, what's ready to be shown, what they're confident can get out the door in a time frame. because Phil Spencer did say when he shows you the actual game, he wants there to be a, a year gap max before you actually get it. Now, that's not applying really to CGI clearly because Xbox likes to pull the trigger early and say like, here's our concept for this thing. I'm talking about you, Perfect Dark. So those games that you're not gonna get for multiple years. Now I know some people are immediately going to leap to the acquisition front and go, oh, they're gonna get Warner Bros games. That's sort of been the rumor as of late because it started back in the summer of last year where they were reportedly looking to sell off their gaming division and then they stopped that. And now things are going kind of south with AT&T where they're trying trying to get rid of and split certain divisions of their entertainment, selling some off to Discovery, keeping some. It's really confusing there where Xbox has the potential to sweep in and grab a studio if they'd like. I would hope if they looked at anything, it would be NetherRealm. I'm not the biggest NetherRealm fan. While I play all their games, I'm not super in love with them, but Xbox needs a fighter. That's a little bit off track though. You're feeling some of that pre-E3 drought, right? We were looking at the Xbox Game Pass announcements on both Ham Radio and Defining Duke, and we're starting to see 
you know, there's a little bit of uh, uh, slowness to Xbox's game right now because you can tell they're trying to balance keeping their platform relevant at the same time as making sure that they have exciting stuff planned for E3. Now, with Xbox and Bethesda joining together, I'm expecting a pretty long showcase, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. I know right now on paper with E3 hype, pouring through our veins, Christmas outfits on, I know what you're thinking. That sounds great if it's like a two-hour show. But what happens is if it's bad and they start to pre-announce stuff and there's lacking of gameplay and the pacing is bad, it can turn what could have been a good tight show with a few less announcements into something horrible and really just drags on. Also, when showcases get too big, there are games I will personally see that I will be excited about and then forget about. And I know I'm not the only one, okay? Because you'll you'll be like a kid in a candy store. Like, oh, look at this. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. And just all over the place. On the note of Matt Booty saying that Xbox Game Studios titles that were original and not sequels were slowed down thanks to COVID, it got me thinking a little bit about what Jason Schreier had reported when it came to Starfield being a late 2022 title. As of this moment in time, we don't know if there was a internal pushback. I don't want to use the word delay, but an internal pushback of some kind. Because what Jason was saying as well, when I had followed up to him and I had not heard back really with any information is on Reset Era that he believes the information myself and many other journalists and insiders were reporting on was coming from the Microsoft side of things, who we just saw pulled the trigger pretty early with Halo Infinite. Whereas he talked to the developers where it seems there's a difference in expectation. It's pretty common that game developers will see dates be put out. We're thinking about Cyberpunk right now where they go, oh, we're going to release it April 2020. And the whole studio kind of laughs and goes, that's not going to happen. Um, that's probably what's occurring right now and why we saw so many 2021 reports. And so I do wonder if... There could have been a shift back because Starfield is this brand new IP. It is going to be this original new Xbox game as well as PC. But that was one of the first things that rolled into my head. But that does leave me a bit more concerned for other games like Avowed, which I'm very excited for, right? I love the idea of Obsidian doing a AAA game. It kind of goes against my grain of like, I want to see the game running first. I don't need your concepts. But Obsidian is a special scenario where I'm sitting there going, like, man, I would just love to see this game in action, but I understand if it's way too early and they can't really deliver on that full vision for maybe another year or so. Um, same thing with Fable. I would love to see some Fable. I think that's probably my guess would be a fall 2022 or more likely early 2023 game. And so with all these games getting pushed back, what we would really hope for from Xbox are these rolling quarters. Every three months, they get a big game out, right? Let's say you get Halo Infinite in the fall, then a couple months later, a new Forza game, Forza Horizon 5. And then a couple months later, you get something like maybe Wolfenstein 3. That's something that's up in the air. Then a couple months later, you get Starfield. And a couple months later, you get Fable. I mean, it could be really exciting, but that's if everything goes well. And it's kind of tough to imagine that in a world where we're starting to get back on our feet a little bit. But we're not back to complete normal where we can go into our studios and we can all work together and not worry about masks and vaccines and all that stuff. And I know this is going to sound antagonistic, but I swear on my life, I'm not trying to be, I'm just speaking my mind, is when Matt Booty says that Game Pass does not influence games, I don't believe that. You know why? Because a lot of first party games really heavily benefit from Game Pass and everyone in Xbox knows it and that's no secret. Uh, Gears 4 had a little bit of monetization issues at first. Gears 5 was pretty bad from what I had heard. I had not played it at launch. As a lot of you know, I played it pretty late into its life cycle, and I'm not really a big Gears multiplayer person. Forza Horizon 4, one of the most successful Game Pass games of all time, and also the most popular Forza game, benefits heavily from Game Pass, and its monetization is designed around that. Sea of Thieves was saved by Game Pass, and once again is this sort of cosmetic loaded game, not really affecting the gameplay, but let's be real here. Xbox first party games 100% benefit from Game Pass, I think that much is obvious, but they tap into it more with their monetization, and yeah, like, that's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't really believe Matt here because there's so many examples we've seen where, you know, they need to make their money somehow. Like, I get it, right? You're, you're giving so many games away pretty much for 15 bucks a month, not bumping that price up. You got to make it somewhere. And um, 
there are certain cases where it got egregious, but just my two cents on that. In other Xbox news, it appears that there is a big DRM issue that is continuing on with the Series X. This video comes from Modern Vintage Gamer, who put a great spotlight on exactly what was happening. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago between the Series X and the PlayStation 5, um, where the PlayStation 5 was struggling with CMOS battery issues, but Xbox arguably had a worse problem. What happened is this sort of came out of a lot of Xbox fans puff puffing out their chest and going, well, we have the better console and in your face. And it's like, well, mm, problem. IGN India did a great roundup of it. Xbox Series X DRM makes it near impossible to play games offline is the title of the article. It seems that Microsoft's digital rights management decisions for the Xbox Series X are a serious cause for concern. According to a video from YouTuber and game developer Modern Vintage Gamer, the Xbox Series X is unable to play games without connecting to Microsoft servers. He tried games off a disc like Rise of the Tomb Raider as well as Hitman 3 and both refused to work offline. While Microsoft recommends keeping your Xbox Series X as your home console in its settings, it's a solution that's described as a band-aid as it doesn't seem to work with every game as it should native xbox series x physical games like devil may cry 5 special edition work fine if installed off the disc and it ran as it should offline this should mean in theory that games that are solely for the xbox series x should work offline and online However, with Microsoft's focus on smart delivery, it means the current crop of Xbox Series X discs that run on the Xbox One as well are essentially coasters. All of this essentially means that you won't be able to play your Xbox games when Microsoft decides to take its servers offline. Does It Play was an account we highlighted in my video on the PlayStation 5 and Series X problems, and they quoted the video saying, yes, it really, really does have a big DRM problem. Combined with all of its forced setup online, all Xbox consoles and smart delivery games will one day be obsolete. Talk about caring for preservation all you want. Actions speak louder than words, and right now, Xbox is the worst platform for preservation. To clarify this, currently all Xbox One S and X Series consoles and all previous Xbox One systems will become e-waste. Server obsolescence is real. Imagine C-Bomb, but there's no fix and likely never will be. The modding community has made it pretty clear they have no plans to fix the Xbox setup because of the token gesture of dev mode. This ruse will prove to be the biggest single hurdle in the removal of the heinous DRM. As someone who collects a lot of games, a lot of them, it's become a hobby now because the pandemic crushed all my other hobbies okay but anyway this is noticeably bad i don't think i need to really spell that one out for you but yeah xbox has really beat the drum of we care about your games we care about preservation and i know some of you are sitting there probably going what are the odds that the servers go offline that xbox drops out of console races look the way i've said it time in time out is let's be proactive this isn't a problem now it won't be a problem for many years but before it becomes a problem, before Xbox can brush it under the rug and say, we've got a new system for you, or we got this upgradable system for you, or AI has taken it this far, before we can get to that point, why don't we get proactive and start rallying a bit for Xbox to look into solving these DRM issues? I think it's super important because they've been about backwards compatibility for a long while. Everyone wants to just be able to throw their disc in and play it offline so that when you're traveling, you can just take your console with you, boom, good to go. I, I just cannot emphasize enough how important this is for game preservation. I wanna be able to one day hand my kid or hand anyone a game and say, hey, try this and let that be that. They don't need to be connected to the internet or whatever. And I understand where we're heading. There's gonna be a lot more online connectivity. There's gonna be a lot more demand for internet globally. I understand where we're heading and Xbox is looking at a streaming future with Game Pass and smart TV apps and going on maybe the Switch and your tablet and everything, right? We're, we're seeing all of that, but when you're talking game preservation, that should not come at the cost of the consumer you know, buying into what you told them, right? Like, we care about your old games, then you got to show it because yeah, Xbox does have a pretty big hurdle to climb here from what it seems to be. So we can only hope pray and be vocal about it so this is me doing my part this last part is actually awesome i wanted to go ahead and spotlight it for all of you because y'all know i i love my handheld systems i love my playstation vita and it looks like microsoft has turned the surface duo into a handheld xbox now tom warren posted a cool video on his twitter account 
highlighting how this thing works this is pretty much like a 950 dollars mini laptop and i would not say buy this thing for the sake of going oh i'm gonna go ahead and get a game pass mobile device it's not worth it but it's really cool when you see this thing in action right you're looking at it now and you can see like the buttons on the bottom the touch screen controls and that's really important because it kind of functions like a ds and when you see that xbox game pass continues to add more and more controls for games for the cloud it's something that they very much want to support i think it would be so cool and i know so many people are with me on this maybe we're a little minority but game boy advance sp is like my favorite system of all time so I'm a little biased i'll be honest <laughs> but i would adore it if xbox did this is me dreaming by the way i should preface all of this hundred dollar system that is a game pass streaming device you know kindle fire apparently you can take like an 80 dollar tablet take your controller and just stream to that call it a day i get that right but xbox should have its own official sort of streaming device kind of a handheld game pass streaming device i just i would lose my mind there's just something about the novelty of that that I know Xbox has the idea of like, hey, this phone here that you have, you don't need to carry an extra device. And that's practical. That makes more sense, right? Or this iPad I have here that I use for all my videos. You can use this instead and, and bring a controller. And it's like, yes, excellent. But the fact that there isn't like a dedicated device kind of shocks me. And I think that would be really nice to see. Because for me, I'm, I, I would love to stream games to my phone. I don't have the the link or the code for uh what xbox game pass is sending out to ultimate subscribers at least yet um but for me personally i don't want to really play on my phone i need my phone for being in contact with people i need in case someone needs me i don't want to drain my battery well for example i'm here at the studio where i don't have access to all my consoles um so yeah having like a dedicated game pass device for those who have the luxury of purchasing it would be fantastic but just my two cents as someone who's a pretty avid handheld fan and with that, that's all I've got for you on the Xbox front of things. It's good to be back doing some Xbox news. Like I said, we took a couple weeks off just because there were certain things that were flowing better into defining Duke and Ham Radio, and I didn't want to just pound away on the, the same thing constantly. So I hope you all are excited, and I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts on E3, uh, your expectations, and fret not, we will be doing a E3 predictions video next week. That'll be an absolute blast. Can't wait for that. It's going to be so funny. I'm pumped. All right. Looking forward to seeing your thoughts. As always, be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who are signing up, support what we're doing here, pushing the limits of the content. A lot of original stuff coming your way very soon. Keep an eye out. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.